Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. As we move into the final weeks of the regular season, here's a look at the teams jockeying for a playoff position in the NFC. All these teams will be playing their hearts out, trying to claim the highest seed possible before Wild Card Weekend. It's the Cardinals going up against the 49ers. With that, let's hand it over to Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this Week 12 matchup. All right, Larry, from the heart of Silicon Valley, there's a look inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. Here's a carry now for Keith Marshall. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Here we go now. Three, nine, on second down, here's Osweiler. And he will find his man on the outside. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. From midfield now, here's Osweiler. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Well, the coaches mentioned they weren't as concerned about big play offense. They thought they could get some shorter, quicker stuff and be consistent. And I, that's kind of what they showed there. What they saw in preparation, what they saw in film, is a defense that likes to get out fast in terms of coverage, meaning they either bail out or they give them a lot of space to throw the underneath stuff. So they decided to take advantage of it and work on it hard in practice this week. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And here's a look at the starting offense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They stay on the ground. This is Marshall again. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. It's Osweiler. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Eric Armstead in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Here comes the Cardinals punter now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. 
Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards on the pickup. And it'll be first down 49ers. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing. And they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is... Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. The fumble, but they're able to maintain possession. Now it's second down. Now Wilson on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Third and long. It's Wilson finding time. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. Call it a loss of four there on the sack. And speaking of the number four, it brings up fourth down now. So on fourth down, out comes Bradley Pinion to punt this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So out now come the Cardinals. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't right turn yet. it over. Right? You're giving it you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. The play clock's running down. Osweiler. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height... He can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. That play almost seemed like a baseball play. See ball, hit ball. But in this case, see guy with ball, tackle guy with ball. time to the tailback and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down maybe a gain of a yard that time but half of the spot actually no gain so third and long oh. 
So they're behind the chains as the offense. 12 yards needed on third down. From the shotgun, Osweiler. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. All right, here we go. Boom, landed. They'll run with Marshall. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. DeForest Buckner is a really tall defensive end slash defensive tackle. How about that move right there to get upfield and make the play in the offensive backfield? Excellent leverage. You're right. Tall, big, 6'7", nearly 300 pounds. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gaunton, Charles Davis. It's the Cardinals in possession of the football, but they face a second and long to start things out. They come up in an Cut. offset on. Now Marshall. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Here's Osweiler to throw. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. From the red zone now, here's Osweiler on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Marshall. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Now it's Osweiler. Pass incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. They come out here in the eye. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! On second down, Osweiler. And that is caught! Touchdown, Cardinals! Their big-bodied receiver, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Cardinals are in for six. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time to see if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now but they have to do it 
without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he stopped immediately there. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Remember, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? Second down, Wilson. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. First down coming there on the intermediate passing play. That's been a point of emphasis, they told us in practice, using those medium routes to keep the defense off balance. And it wasn't just them telling us. We got to watch them practice it and work on it because they've been trying to fine-tune it and get it right before this game. And I think they have to be happy with the result. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And an alley to run. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Touchdown, 49ers. A big play there. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the 49ers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. They go play action here on first down. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. And you really can't pin that one on the quarterback, Charles. The O-line, they've got to protect them. And they know it. That's their meal ticket. They want to take care of the big guy behind them. In this case, they let him down. Second and ten now. Watch tight, tight is right. Watch tight, tight is right. Uh, here we go. Three, nineteen. Osweiler. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Normally he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. Extra defensive back in there on third and ten. From the gun, it's Osweiler. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll need to get the play off quickly. Here's Osweiler. 
It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and no more. The tackle by Eric Armstead. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Let's go! Blue Blue on third down, Osweiler. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up on the top shelf where the kids can't get it. This is Marshall. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Down to about the 22 here. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves them with third and just a couple. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, He's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Osweiler now to throw on third down. Going to throw right side here, complete. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. Back to the booth right after this. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. On first and ten, it's Osweiler. And he whips that one incomplete there. the offense. This is play number 11 here on this drive. Second and 10. It's Osweiler again. This will be caught at about the 5. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the... And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try to run it in with Marshall. And he will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Keith Marshall with touchdown number seven on the year. 
And the Cardinals have taken the lead. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Throw on first down with Wilson. He's got time. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Second and ten, it's Wilson. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. The Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. The throw on first down with Osweiler. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect, but as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier. Trying to keep him in the rhythm. Second and ten now. Osweiler. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the former first rounder, Jimmy Ward. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. After the interception, here's Wilson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It's a gain of 24 that time. And the 49ers are going to get a first. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, the flat-out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Fresh set of downs here. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. 
So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. On second down, Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. And it's third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Third and long, it's Wilson. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first down, Wilson looking for Green, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And the ball backed way up, so thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. After the interception, here's Osweiler. Throwing left side, it's complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. All right, here we go. On first and ten, it's Osweiler. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. Well, he just threw an interception last drive. Nearly another pick. And things aren't very even right now, are they? It's a little bit sloppy out there, isn't it? It's kind of the district driving on those paved roads and those country roads that have those <laughs> potholes in them, isn't it? Because that's the way this game's going right now. A lot of bouncity bounce to it. You spent some time on some Tennessee country roads. I certainly have. Plenty of family back there. God love them. Now it's Osweiler. Can't find anyone, and down he goes. Osweiler sacked. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. Okay, so Larry apparently giving us the silent treatment all of a sudden, and we're going to skip ahead to quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Throw on 
first down with Wilson. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. And now a carry here for their fullback. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Let's face it, you always want a team full of guys who can get your first downs and big plays of all styles, but you've got to have a big man. You can just turn and hand it to, and he can be dependable in picking up first downs. So the offense has it first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to be wrapped up and driven down. That one will set him back nearly ten yards here on first down on the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> On second down. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. You drop in eight. Where are you going to go with the football? And here comes play number six on this drive. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He's got top pressure, comes, and Wilson's going to go down. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And we'll see what he can do on the return. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Cards will take over first and 10. A look at the offense now here coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here. Didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Right, go. Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Here's Hosweiler to throw, and he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. From the gun on third down, Osweiler. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. It goes as a gain of nine and it moves the chains. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. All right, here we go. Green, 39. And on the ground they go with a running back. They're looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, 
That was all the defense. They made it happen. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Now Osweiler. A bullet throw, but incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. side judge stop his walk that's the question he says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17 yard line out on the field now here come the 49ers and they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time which is punting the football but when you look at how teams play the game that complimentary football comes into play how do I take care of my defense how do I take care of my offense well the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out give them a little bit of rest yeah time time for them to give them a rest took the words right out of my mouth see if they stay on the ground for second down on second down Wilson Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop him? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. And they'll run it here. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run, and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. as they run the counter play. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. One of the beauties of a 3-4 defense is that you have flexibility with your linebackers and you can put them in different spots. But one of the downsides is an offensive team that's committed to running the football, you can get your big offensive lineman up on linebackers quicker, and that usually gives you an advantage in running it. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. And the O-line will have to do a better job protecting here on third down after that sack. Third and 
long. It's Wilson. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Deep drop. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Throwing Osweiler. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. From the shotgun, Osweiler. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Now Osweiler is slow to get up. Still on the ground following the last play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Play clock winding down. And now the punt team couldn't get ready in time, and this is going to be a delay. Here comes the Cardinals punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. That's taken at around the 40. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They send Green to the left on his own. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. Wide open receiver complete. And oh so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here.
They come out with one back and three tight ends. And they give this time to the tailback. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it? I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. On second down. And it's complete. In the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. A.J. Green. His second touchdown on the season. And the 49ers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And an important one that is as we are tied now early in this fourth quarter. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. Give him 30 yards there. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. And now a first down following that long game. Now they'll run it on the toss. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. There's so many things that go into playing the position of linebacker. Some of them are actually subtle doing the drill work that you do all the time in practice and carrying it over to the game. Get rid of blockers and get to the ball carrier and knock him down for a loss. They'll set up a throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And a pretty simple completion there underneath, but a successful one for the offense. Partner doesn't have to be the big shots downfield all the time. Having that safety net underneath is a great thing for a quarterback. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Back to throw. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic, so anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add it a little extra at the end with a short run. And he'll give it here to his running back. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and they ran the ball successfully behind that power set. One receiver left, two to the right. They go play action here on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. 
All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Second and goal from the seventh. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. So they're back at the seven now for third and goal. They come up in an offset eye. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And this is going to be incomplete. And that was a nice play. He knocked it away, but obviously you want the interception in this situation. You want to take away any chance that they have any decision to make on fourth down. But things happen so quickly in the end zone in this compressed area of the field that you're just happy to knock it away and not allow a touchdown. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. We're following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. And they'll go on the ground. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. And they just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. On second down, Wilson. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Certainly some contact there, and that's why there's a penalty on the defender for pass interference. So hard to time it up for a defender to hit the receiver when the ball arrives. Got there a little bit early on that one. So here we go, first and ten now. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see, second and nine. They go play action with Wilson. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. There he goes left side. And they will score. It's a pick six. to add the extra point. Oh, 
And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded at the two. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. He's going to wind up and air it out. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. He's got time. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield strike. And the Cardinals offense here ready to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah. the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Give it to him right up the gun. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. And the 49ers going to take another timeout. That's going to be their second. They'll be left with one more plus the two-minute warning. And we'll be back. They come out here in the eye. He'll look to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. Here comes the Cardinals punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Just 24 yards there. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. One thing I can say pretty safely, 
that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he will find his big tight end over the middle. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, they've been struggling in the passing game. Do you like the aggressiveness there? I mean, it worked on that play, but do you like it? I do because a lot of the time you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start to press up on you, push them deep, find some space, and open things up again. Being aggressive there, I think, will pay off for them. And the offense lining up first and ten. All right, all right, here we go. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. We just saw another example of really good defensive football, which has led to the cushion that they have in this game. Got to him once again, knocked him on the ground, forced an incompletion. And they've set the tone. It's one thing to set the tone, another to come in here on the road and set the tone. He'll try again with the arm here on nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Partner, I know the ball security is preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do if it was third and 10 versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So the field goal means we're back to a one-score game, but with no timeouts left, I think this has to be an onside kick. I like your analysis there, partner. I think you're right. You need the ball back. That's probably your only avenue. Oh, I think the Niners got it back. Yes, San Fran recovers. So they've accomplished half the mission, Charles. They get the onside kick. They do need a touchdown here, but they've got some time to do it. In the excitement, there's no need to press. Plenty of time. They have the opportunity. Now they just need to execute and finalize things. running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. Back to throw. Forced out to his left. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. What a catch, and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them, They get that little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. Uh, 
They'll look to throw. Surveying the field. He's going to let it fly. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And that is going to seal this victory as time runs out. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here, coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it, and they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. So for the cards, the win gets them a step closer to 500 at 5-6. Five and six. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans. Meanwhile, for the Niners, it's a loss that sets them back in their playoff push as they fall to 6-5. and five. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Santa Clara.